And welcome to episode 50 and the first ever live episode of the Brood Sages, Stormbound Players with a Head for the Game. For at least two of us here, we're in the midst of a pretty bad winter storm. The snow is snowing, the wind is blowing, but I can weather the storm bound. I am Freeloader, and with me as always are Subaiku and Thomas. Subaiku, how's it going today? Fantastic. And Thomas, how are you doing? I'm pretty all right. <laughs> we are the Brood Sages, easily the second best Stormbound related podcast in production. And as a reminder, you can always follow us at Brood Sages on Twitter. Or for all of you who knew the theme song to Speed Racer by Heart, our email address is thebroodsages at gmail.com. Now, guys, we've got a whole bunch of exciting stuff to do. Uh, certainly, uh, uh, mentioning right off the bat that this is our 50th episode, uh, I don't think anyone thought we were going to get past two. Uh, so, so here we are, surprised as much as you guys are. Uh, but we're here, and uh, we've invited uh, the entire community. Anyone who wanted to join the Brood Sages Discord server could show up today and uh, ask us questions live. So, so we will be interrupting the flow uh, to answer some questions. Evil Deck uh, actually uh, took the opportunity to post a whole bunch of stuff uh, 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 that we will try to get to fairly early if we can. Um, there are also, of course, patch notes. That was the reason for this episode to begin with. Uh, and we will go through some of the new cards coming up, the balance changes, and all the rest, folks. Um, but first off, we just wanted to say a big hello to our community. Uh, thank you all for being here. We would be nothing without uh, people actually listening. We would just be shouting into the void. <laughs> so thank you for being here and making us somehow relevant, which is still blowing my mind after all of these episodes. Um and then, Sebeke, would you like to get us started? We'll, we'll, I think what we'll do, uh, we'll, let's do our standard reminders. Uh, uh, remind everyone that coming up very shortly uh, will be a race uh, uh, to the Heroes League, correct? That's correct. You know how it goes by this point. If you make the Heroes League in the first week, share your uh, screenshot and your ID to Discord. And you get participation in a raffle, win some free rubies, get a reward for making it up there. Boom. Uh, and, and, and to add a little extra fuel to that fire, we'll get to it later uh, in the patch notes section. But as a sorry that our servers were so wonky, uh, Sheepyard uh, this coming week is actually add, uh, doubling all the gold rewards for your wins. So it's like even better than normal to just jam as many games in the first week as you can. Uh, exactly. Thomas. Do you know yet what Toad Games are? Can you tell us about Toad Games? <laughs> <laughs> I know a little bit more now, finally. Um, I still haven't joined yet, uh, unfortunately. And with it being uh, during draft days, I, I still haven't joined. Um, but he's been getting feedback to see if uh, people want to have Toad Games on different days of the week. So I'm really hoping that people want to try and open it up to, for an entire week or for the weekend or something like that. But... So Toad Games, uh, what it is, is you join the Do Toad Games uh, chat on Discord, and then once you're in there, you literally just find other people that want to play out some games. Um, so you're going to come up with whatever rules that you want for your matches between your opponents. Um, you start with, I believe it's 600 coins, right? As like the, is it five or 600? 500? Five. Okay, 500 coins. And uh, you have to play at least three games if I understand that right uh, and then for each win you get 100 coins each loss you lose 100 coins from the pool um, and you just play as many games as you want until you either run out of coins or the time frame ends uh, and whatever you end with uh, Sheepyard compensates you with that amount of coin at worst case uh, you, you get to play five games against friends best case you win some extra but I mean on average, you're at least getting 200, right? Just show up, lose three times, and say, okay, I'm done next week. That's okay. We'll move on from there. So the next question, uh, Thomas, why don't you read this one? I had just said right before we started, I never had the uh, the notes pulled up. Oh, so. <laughs> dear. oh, you still don't have it. I thought, that, I thought me... you were saying that because, oh, let me get them pulled up. Okay. Well, that's fine. All right. Let uh, me get them pulled up. That's fine. No, no. <laughs> As more cards are introduced, should a fifth faction be created to reduce the number of neutral unit types? Now, this is a very different way, uh, guys, of handling that same kind of issue of a larger library, 
I love the idea of a fifth faction. Uh, I would be all for it. I don't know. I'll pass yeah, it on I, from there. I worry about dilution there. Um, you know, I really feel like each faction has a very strong uh, individual um, focus and uh, flavor. And as you add a fifth one, it's going to be really hard to keep those unique and separate. Uh, yeah. Unless we get some new mechanics in the game to go along with it, you're not you're not dissuading oh. me. <laughs> that sounds great. <laughs> so the issue I have with this one, um, I don't even know how they would approach this. You can't just create. Okay, I don't know how many cards there are in a particular faction right now. What is it? Probably about thirty, give or take. If sure. they were to just add thirty cards right now uh, for a specific faction, that's going to be rough. Um, it's going to take a long time to level all those cards up, mm. up and it's just that, like that's the biggest part um, to try and do that all at once um, is going to be pretty messy so I think right. I actually saw it like later in a question or I just started like thinking about it after reading this one the only other way I could kind of see something like this working is if they were to take something like the felines or pirates or well, probably oh, okay. not dragons, but like felines or pirates mm. that are already in the game. We've already got them leveled up, and right. then they end up being pulled out to their own faction. That's actually Maybe a very being clever. The, the core of a new faction, and then add some new cards to supplement it, kind of deal. Yeah, exactly. Then you're not really you're not really adding cards to the game, at, or adding a faction to the game so much as just reorganizing. Well, I mean, it'd be its own faction then, because if the felines, if you couldn't add fluffy bad boxers to your swarm deck or shadow fen, that kind of concept. But I just think trying to add like thirty cards to the game ASAP or like all in one fell swoop is is rough. Yeah, it's interesting because Hearthstone actually, uh, um, and I know we always go back to Hearthstone, but but uh, within the last couple of years, they just finally, you. just me, uh, they finally <laughs> introduced a new faction in their game. They started with nine. They decided to bring in Demon Hunter. Um, and one of the things that they had to contend with, Thomas, was the same kind of issue about, well, these are new cards. How do we entice people to invest in these new cards? And their solution was, of course, perfectly in line with the way Blizzard does business, make them all broken so that the only thing that can win for the next three months are Demon Hunter games. Right. So you had to buy all the new cards. You had to buy the new faction. You had to be into it and you had to invest all of your money and time into it because it was the only thing that could win for a while. And then they had to pair it back. Bringing in an entire new faction's worth of cards is super difficult. Uh, doing it in a balanced uh, manner, I think, is impossible. You know, even if now, you have. Go ahead. What I will say that Blizzard did right with that was they did give away a bunch of cards for free. Yes. Just you, they just appeared in your collection. Uh, obviously, Hearthstone doesn't have the same leveling mechanic that Stormbound does. So if cards appear in your collection at level one, it's still kind of really unusable for a large number of players. Um, it's relatively easy to get stuff up to level three if you're you know, playing in gold where there's a cap at level three. Fine, it, it's not that unreasonable. But if you're trying to use them competitively in the Heroes League, then... Yeah, you really, you got to work to get them leveled up or they all show up at level five, which is, it seems unlikely, let's say that. It seems yep. a little dangerous. Although with the level caps, it's not such a big deal. You don't break iron or, or silver by dropping level five cards into somebody's library because the level cap would prevent it from becoming uh, a problem. Um, but I yep. do think Thomas's solution gets around all of this by just basically saying, okay, well, and, and, and up until... Yeah. Up until just these patch notes, I would have said you could even do it with ancients. Uh, but as we are now learning, there will be faction ancients, faintients, uh, if you will. So moving on from there, Sabaiku, what's our next question? Next question is, what are your views on the potential for a multi-faction deck in either the existing game mode or in a new game mode? Uh, you know, this is uh, the example Evil Deck gives here is uh, Broodmother Cordia and Mia for a huge eight mana combo. Seems balanced. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. But I will say things are definitely balanced right now in such a way where the faction cards that do not normally 
play together. Um, they don't have to worry about that kind of interaction. You know, mm -hmm. we've seen there have definitely been some difficulties with uh, Sheepyard introducing new cards and trying to balance them. And we've given them credit for making balance changes to try to get them right. But can you imagine if something, if there was an unintended interaction that they didn't consider, like, for example, Mia and Cordia, which is a relatively cheap combo, uh, that would be a whole lot of work for them to rebalance everything. So this would definitely have to be a fun game mode and not a competitive game mode. Um, but it would, be, it would be interesting. I don't know if it would be anything more than a novelty for me personally, but I am the kind of person who enjoys competitive ladder gameplay. Uh, so <laughs> I am probably not the target audience for that. Yeah, I, I thought the amalgamation brawl would have brought more like nutty screenshots of, hey, look what happened when these two cards got together uh, uh, kind of thing. Uh, and and they never really amounted to anything. For the most part, the feedback from amalgamation is, oh my gosh, this RNG is just terrible. Like you can't build a deck. You just have to throw cheap stuff in there and hope the trash they give you gets ignored kind of a thing. Um, because Harvesters exists and now Rogue Sheep, um, there's always been a need to make sure that the game can handle at least functionally, like not crash when faction A's card gets played with faction B's card. Um, so the game seems to have the ability to handle functionally all of that stuff, whether or not it's balanced. Well, the good news is Harvesters isn't that good to begin with, and neither is Rogue Sheep, so who cares if it's balanced? <laughs> Thomas, your you thoughts? You can get some... Oh. You can get some yeah. crazy combos from it, but you can also get garbage from it since, you know, it, it, it's all about what you put in your deck in the first place and what your opponent put in their deck, and you can't control that. When you're building your deck, it's very different. Right. Mm -hmm. right go ahead, Thomas. Yeah. No, that's fine. I was going to agree 100% with what you had said originally. I'm uh, a ladder player myself, and so uh, the, the casual mode doesn't appeal to me as much either. Um, Magalmation is uh, fine. It... It's fun to play, but I think the reason why we don't see these kind of broken combos in that is because people aren't playing a whole lot of games of it because the games go so long because it is true mirror matches. And additionally, you have no idea how if you're going to be able to get the other half of your opponent's right. combo or even if you're going to get your half of the combo for your for your half. Exactly. Um, amalgamation is very different from constructing a deck and thoughtfully putting those cards in. Yeah, yep. I, I tried to do an Arc Druid Aaron Rain hoping to find uh, 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 Dark Harvest. I really wanted to try Rain Dark Harvest as a. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why I'm like one one week I'm just like this is gonna happen. I'm gonna queue into somebody who's got Swarm and they're playing Dark Harvest. Let's go, and it just never happened. And it was just bad. <laughs> like. I think, wouldn't you think that if you're going to try something like that, you want to try and use the, the half that isn't played as much? Like, people play Reign of Frogs more often, so it's like, you need the Dark Harvest combo half I'm not because play swarm. they're more likely. My Swarm cards <laughs> suck. <laughs> Doesn't matter, they get them too. <laughs> well, there is that. <laughs> All By right. the way, um, so we're starting to get a few questions over in like the Discord chat. Should oh. we wait until after that no, everything no, no. is over? Or? No, okay. we, we're doing it live. I got it. Okay, so man, I already missed my first one. By the way, I screwed up with the um, uh, Toad Games. Apparently, it is now Friday through Sunday for Toad Games, so that'll be extremely nice for me. I will actually join, and I will next time we do our podcast. I promise, I'll actually say it right. <laughs> Thomas will get it right one of these days, Ice Coma. We promise. Just not, th <laughs> just not this week. All right. What's our yeah. first question from Discord then? All right, uh, so we've got uh, Singularity uh, asking, what do you guys think of a 2v2 Stormbound match? I, I don't, are you like asking like from the side and from the top? Impossible. No, 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 wait, 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 no, 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 wait, 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 wait. Maybe it's a wider board? Well, actually, what if it was two boards? Okay, so your units stay on your board. Your opponent, your opponent's units stay on their board, but your spells help you and your partner. So, like, you cast something like okay. Kindred's Grace, everybody on your side. You cast something like Bladestorm, everything on their side. So, you still have your column 
and your your partner has their columns uh and then like if either of you die you both die kind of a thing or maybe maybe you'd play it more like uh uh a game of emperors and 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 Magic the Gathering, where actually just if you if you stand alone and you can beat the other two, do it. <laughs> so I I think once he already wins with his Bragda, yes, Grace. Oh my gosh! Could you imagine <laughs> your your partner plays Bragda and you're just like, wait, what? Oh baby! All right, so you you are seeing a world in which there is no real communication between the two players, Correct, right? Because there's no real communication right now between the two players. And do they queue up together, or is it just you yep. go into the queue and you get matched randomly with a partner? Yep. Yep. Hmm. Okay. Because I think That's there's some crazy crazy stuff you could do if you could actually queue in together with. It. Oh with yeah, but it, see, but it would be so unfair because the two of you could be on a phone call together or Discord, and your opponents might not. Uh, so I think the only fair way to do it is right. for you to just hey. say, "I want to be in a two v two." Communication is a competitive advantage. I'm okay with that. Well, <laughs> look, if if you see me drop an empty rain on the or or we'll see. The funny thing about it is, like it's RNG as to who would get to go first out of you and your opponent. So I think yeah. it always has to zigzag. Because otherwise, if I knew that, like, if I'm the left player and the right player gets to go next, my partner, I could just drop Bragda in front of a one health and hit go and just be able to see my partner like, here you go. I don't know what's going to happen when our, our opponent gets to attack, but we're going to have a big board. <laughs> Good luck. Just set up your board however you like. So I think it always has to go, like, zigzagging so that it's never two uh, uh uh teammates getting to play back to back yeah that would be too easy to win yeah, yeah. speaking of difficulty balancing multi-faction decks like this this seems right in the same wavelength oh it would be so good though uh, but i will say at least the 2v2 would be a very different game mode mm. and would be absolutely worth pursuing more than like just creating multi-faction decks and allowing like a wild casual gameplay there yeah i would love i would love to play that I, I would play a lot of that i'm out of tea you would complain all the time when you got uh when you got match up with a partner that <laughs> either just didn't have a deck that worked with yours or didn't have the ability to uh, uh understand what you were doing and take advantage of it or even what they are doing like when they play like like we've already seen Twilight Prowlers. What are you doing? You don't put your units in a column. Like yeah, you know, stuff like that. <laughs> where it's just like, oh, I would have won, but my partner, my partner threw the game. It wasn't me. Could never possibly be me. <laughs> all right, you said right. times when oh. you're. Then there's those times when you're friends with one C and you're like, oh, this is gonna go great. Yeah, you exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> But, all right, so next one that we've got uh, from Wazili. I, actually, I don't even know how you pronounce that. Uh, Winter Rave guy. Yes. Wazili, right? Wazili? Wazili. Wazili? I've always... Wazili, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, they asked, what do we think of the uh, the Winter Agent? And we'll get to that uh, when we get through the, the patch well, notes. That's right. So. Let's not jump the gun on that. Come on now. Yep. Exactly. And right. Cam, uh, just ask it again since it was missed. Why is Thomas such a handsome young man? We're gonna skip that one, know, right? <laughs> if I had if I had an echo in the room, I'd ask Alexa to play "Let's Get It On" by Marvin Gaye. But unfortunately, MKM, you're just gonna have to stare in silence. All right, moving on. Uh, All right, yes, moving on. <laughs> uh, what are your three? It's starting oh, to get kind of filled up in the Discord. <laughs> oh, that's that's okay. That's okay. Uh, All right, uh, Isakoma had a good comment on mm -hmm. the uh, on the two v two like. What about a board like Chinese checkers? It's a big plus sign for 2v2. You're each across from an opponent, and there's no man's land in the middle. Imagine cards like Zuri buffing your partner's units in the no man's land. As it like goes across? Oh, gosh. Yes. Imagine your partner's units getting in your way, and you don't. your units don't advance in the same way that you think that they will. Yeah. That's the, so, that would be, be the so, fun I'd one. be so mad. I would be so frustrated. As, my, it's hard enough for me to keep track of positioning on a 1v1 board. My my partner plays rock workers in the middle and everyone's jammed up. Like, no, what are you doing? Oh, freeze would be brutal. Oh, God. Freeze yeah, would freeze. be brutal. Yeah, freeze would be But like you there. said, Zuri would be great. Uh, mm -hmm. Forgotten Souls would be weird as you like 
start forcing units to move crisscross and you're not really sure which one is moving first. Well, yeah. Because yeah. then send your partner's units probably off over to whichever way they're supposed to go normally. <laughs> I like that mode. I'd play that mode. You play that mode. I, I, I have to see it before and understand what some of the, the rules would be before I can. Uh, All right. You heard it here, Brushoja. We've been satisfied with draft mode for a whole month. Now it's time for a new game mode. God, I love draft mode. If you could draft just keep rolling them so out cool. once a month, we'd yeah, appreciate that's, that's that. That's all we need. One month. <laughs> one month. All right. Oh, geez. All right. We're finally caught up on Discord now. Excellent. So the next question from uh, uh, Evil Deck is, if the three of you had to do a cosplay together, what would you go as? And when will we see three toads in a trench coat? That that would be the cosplay. Three toads, <laughs> three toads in the trench coat is good. I uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna steal Freeloader's '80s references. You remember that uh, Steve Martin and Martin Short movie, The Three Amigos? Mm-hmm. There you go. <laughs> I, I I'll get a sombrero. Let's do it. Uh, what are your three favorite? Or what are your favorite two to three card interactions and why? I'll let uh, Sebeku, you go first. Uh, Faithless prophets and poison. Thomas? Um, lately, it's been uh, Petrified Fossils and Trekking Aldermans against Shadowfen. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah, trek, Trekking Alderman and and anything that does damage has been has been my go to the last two months since the buff. Um, witches especially, like on seven, Trekking and Witches is just filthy. It is so gross. Uh. The other one I really like is putting Fluffy on their baseline and conceding. Uh, them just hitting the concede button uh, has, has been really good. Great interaction. Yeah, it's such a good interaction. You put Fluffy there, they hit the little white flag. Everything's great. Um, yeah, no, the Faithless, the Faithless Prophets Poison one, Subaiki, that's been a, a, a kind of a golden interaction for quite a while. Uh yeah, it's it's fun because you can use it offensively, but you can also use it in the middle of the board to get weird stuff. And oftentimes you or your opponent both don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> um, I had a great uh, friendly against, against Gucci Socks the other day where he put Faithless Prophet on my baseline and I attacked into it with Crimson Sentry so I could avoid his poison play. The Crimson Sentry hits it turns it around, the poison hits it and turns it around again, and then the poison tick hits it and turns it around one more time so it doesn't actually go into my baseline. It just goes on to the second row, and it was a, a really uh, fun little counterplay that I was like, eh, I'm like 80% sure this is going to work. Just fingers <laughs> crossed I didn't just kill myself. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. If the rodents built the constructs to serve them, the ravens rule the toads as dictators, and the frostlings and dwarves have a pact, who's in charge of swarm? Undeads or satyrs? Well, that's well, obvious. There's Undead. a queen. Wait, what? Queen of herds? <laughs> yes. There's a queen. Yep. Absolutely right. undead. That was All easy. Right. Got some more from, from Discord. Okay. I think I'm just going to start raising like my hand or something like that whenever there's another. So that, that way we don't uh, keep jumping on so we can kind of try and get these in, in real time as yeah. much as possible. We'll, we'll hit a few more from the Discord and then we'll go to the patch notes. Yep. Yep. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, would you rather see New Ancient or, whoa, people typing, so it's moving all over the place. Would you rather see more unit types or more elaboration on some of the older types like dragons, pirates, knights? I would absolutely love to see more of um, cards that already exist, like the the older um, action or older unit types, and expanding upon that. We don't have anywhere near enough of just basically all of them, in my opinion. Hmm. Except for elders, there's, all, Except there's for... enough elders there. Yeah, true. That's probably the most of them. There are so there are. A couple of mechanics that I would love to see added to the game in some sort. Um, uh, ones that are f like like fun that uh, uh, I have enjoyed in other games. Um, if there's one like mechanic that I don't feel is fully flushed out that I would like to see Sheepyard expound on, I would really like to see them drop whatever the heck soap cleanse is supposed to synergize with <laughs> could, could, 
like I, I understand what they're doing with confusion. They've I feel like they've put enough felines out there now. We get it. Like okay, confusion works more or less. It's a strong but not OP kind of mechanic. We're good. I am really <sighs> soap cleanse doesn't make sense to me. So I, I want to see whatever kind of yeah. thing there is with that. I want to see it all out. I think soap cleanse actually doesn't make sense, uh, especially in draft mode. And it's not for the reason you already think, you know, the one mana cycle. Yeah. It actually does have a legitimate purpose. And so back when I started, I was always complaining that Shadow Fens, the only faction where it's like two like synergy type uh, cards or, you know, like every faction has like their t two abilities or whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Shadow Fens is the only one that are conflicting with each other. You're trying to poison all your opponent's crap. And then yeah. you're trying to convert these poison things. Why would you want to do that? Okay. And so back when you're like low levels and you don't have good, great level cards, you were stuck doing this kind of thing all the time where you're uh, poisoning things and then you end up, you've got your um, your conversion cards and it's like, well, everything's poison, so I'm just going to take a poison thing, I guess. At least Soap Cleanse can, can clear those things up. And um, I've done that a few times actually in Brawl where I've converted something and I was able to, to cleanse it right back. I mean, I, I have I like that. I have liked it with just because I, I level up my heliotroopers always to five. They win trades uh, uh, in draft mode, and since they're winning trades, they're down to like two health. And then you drop soap cleanse on it. And you're like, ha ha! Look at that. <laughs> um, that doesn't mean it's good <laughs> by any stretch of the imagination. Um, it's definitely I mean, not a rare. Yeah. No. No, it, it, there's a use for it, and just because there's a fringe use for it doesn't necessarily make it a good card. I would like to see that develop more, too. Yeah, definitely. Um, I'm happy with what they're doing with the Ancients. You know, like we said, we'll talk about that soon. Uh, but they they introduced a new, a new unit type, and now they're actually fleshing it out and making it a, a viable whole as opposed to a couple of random one-off cards. Um, and I do like the mechanic. So, the the before movement mechanic is different. Uh, it's not you know whenever it takes damage. It's a different thing. I, I I like it. I think the game is better with it than before. Uh, you know, agreed. whether or not these cards are the cards that make ancients a real faction like elders are, or not faction, but like a real race like elders are. Uh, it, you know whether these are going to be the cards that kind of solidify it or maybe we need still a couple extra we don't have a legendary ancient yet right so i imagine at some point we might get a legendary ancient yeah brashosha leaked in discord today that the plan is for two legendary Ooh. ancients in a total of 19 ancients all right well so that's going to be a very sussed out 19. race then and now okay. that'll be over the next five or six months if we keep getting two a month but okay okay that's, that's okay. uh yep yeah. That's pretty reasonable. Evil Deck asked one last uh, question that I thought. So, so the the question about he asked a question about do we like the idea of traps being able to use some sort of spell or unit to to uh, uh, make a specific cell in the board have special uh, actions when a unit steps on it, kind of a thing. I love the idea. Whether or not it's one that I think needs to happen in the game, yeah. it would be cool if it did. Um, but the question that he asked that. Um, I thought uh, we should respond to as the game expands. Would you like to see extra ladder ranks? If so, what should they be called and where should they go? Uh, and the reason why I brought this one up specifically is because we don't have a level four cap anywhere. <laughs> and that's still my OCD yeah. is really bothered by that. <laughs> so, uh, Thomas, what do you think? Uh, uh, as more people enter the game, should we have an additional league? And if we should have it in an additional league, where do you want it? Um... An additional league, I think there would be, it'd be good for there to be one between uh, gold and platinum, and that one is level four cards, uh, or just make platinum level four. That would also make sense to me. Subaku? Yeah, I don't, I don't see the need for any additional leagues really, um, and I say that only because I look at the heroes league kind of like as a catch-all for people who are like you know basically out of diamond um and there's there's kind of 
like different I, I see heroes league is already having different strata and those are basically different leagues to me like you know like under 500 500 to 100 100 to 50 and 50 to zero is kind of how i break it down in I my mind as yeah 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 as being those those different leagues within Heroes League, and even though they're not technically discrete leagues, I tend to find that uh, there's differences in card levels. There's different in in the quality of my opponent's play, um, and it all kind of works out. Okay, well, very good. Then from there, we are going to move into the patch notes. Um... Uh, first thing up in the patch notes, we've already... Uh, we oh. have... Uh, oh. we, co before we start in patch notes, we just have a couple comments on Twitch that I need to address. Uh, sure. Evil Deck says, uh, if there's a world record you'd like to see attempted, let him know he's got some time. Uh, so we'll <laughs> open that up to the community. Uh, we don't have to discuss that here. Uh, and then Reckless says, Thomas looks so cool. And Thomas, you're looking good. Man, <laughs> Thomas. Looking good. Apparently, taking it away. Uh, Sebeku, you are <laughs> flashing. Yep. Yeah. Wow. Well, yeah. Something was up with my camera there for a moment, but Oof. seems to be okay. All right. Sweet. Uh, Not moving. losing power from the storm yet. I am glad to hear that. Uh, so uh, we've already alluded to this, uh, but the patch notes confirmed that there will be uh, some compensation. Uh, they had problems with their ISP uh, and some of their server mirrors. They had some problems trying to uh, uh, fix instabilities within the game. Uh, those instabilities got compounded because draft mode was so cool and still is so cool and so popular. Um, so as an apology to the community, Sheepyard is uh, making the first week of February uh, a double coin event. So uh, your coin cap is raised 800 um, or 1400, depending upon if you have premium pass. Uh, and you will be rewarded twice as many coins for every win you get. Freaking awesome! Uh, on top of that, the brawl event for the week is going to be half price. Also friggin' awesome. And uh, lastly, every player who logs on to the game at least once during that first week, so make sure you do, uh, will be granted one free additional entry card to the draft mode. So two out of the three this coming <laughs> week for me are going to be free. As a freeloader, I am happy with this. Thomas, your thoughts? This is awesome. Uh, I really like that discount for brawl. That, that's a good 10,000 coins right there when you go all the way to the last milestone in ultimate. So that's huge. So thank you. And to oh. me, that's it. <laughs> okay. Nope. I appreciate that they're uh, putting forth a, a little compensation. It's a nice gesture. The game was uh, definitely a, a little rough for a little while there. Um, I know it was a ton of work for them to fix it. And it's nice that they have a little bit of empathy for us as the players also. Yeah, yeah for sure. Huge hats, hats off to, to all the developers uh, who spent late nights uh, and, and weekends getting all of that done. Um, I would say at this point, in the two years that I have played the game, I've never had it as responsive on the iPhone as I have it right now. Even things like going into the store, hitting refresh uh, uh, to see three new cards serve takes no time whatsoever. Everything is quick and snappy. Um, I actually think right now the game is in the best state for its stability uh, that it's ever been on top of being in the best state that we have ever experienced in terms of just, gosh, it's a good game. It's balanced. Draft mode's awesome. Like there's, it's good right now. So um, if on top of that, we get twice as much gold and pay half as much for brawl, I'm happy. Um, so moving on from there, by the way, uh, if you want to follow along, you can always follow along at stormbound-kitty.com. Huge shout out to Kitty. I know we don't always say it. We should always say it. She is a godsend. She is wonderful. All the work she's done for the community over the years has been underappreciated to be, to, 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 <laughs> to say the least. Um, but she even has, a, there's a calculator up there for you to see what it would cost you to get anywhere within the brawl with the, uh, uh cheap and brawl. Uh, and from that, you can also follow us next because we are going to talk about balance changes. So, Baiku, uh, this one was long in the making, I think. Tell me about green prototypes. Green prototypes are finally getting a nerf after all the uh, 
I don't want to say all the complaints about it being overused because also there's a ton of uh, people saying, why should I use green prototypes? It's giving strength to my opponent. Uh, but what green, proto <laughs> green prototypes finally give strength to your opponent as its ability on death will now vitalize mm. your opponent's units. So if you do not get a clean trade, if the ability buffs your opponent, it's going to also give it vitality. Um, I think most of the time, this doesn't matter. Most of the time, you're playing green prototypes in such a way where you get a clean trade. Mm -hmm. uh, what this does is this rewards opponents who are able to take advantage of your just leaving green prototypes out on the board. And, um, you know, if, if your opponent is smart, they, they get a buff out of it. Now they get a, you know, an extra strength or two. It's it's fair. It's good. It's not enough to make me stop using the card because cheap movement is definitely at a premium. But now I'm punished a little bit more for it sometimes. Thomas, the question is in draft. So in, in ranked, Ooh. I think it's the exact same situation as always. Um, every once in a while, I may now keep this in the hand uh, as the game mm -hmm. goes on. In the past, I always would still just throw it out there because... I want to be able to get to the other cards in my deck. And so this is just a uh, one mana to cycle through my deck. Whereas now in draft, it may not be quite as auto include because uh, if you send it across the board, your opponent is going to get three or four strength out of that uh, over the course of the entire board. And that's pretty significant at uh, 10, 11, 12 base health. Yeah. When base health is lower and when unit strength is lower, vitality matters more for sure. Um, mm -hmm. And you're right, it, it's going to be a little bit harder to deal with if if you leave your green prototypes even at level one, which I often do because uh, a lot of the time if I spend my levels on green prototypes, then the buff gets too big for me to handle in draft mode. Um, even at level one, though, you're punished just as much. The vitality is still just as hard to deal with there. Eh, so, so the two areas where i thought this impacted uh um i didn't think too much about draft but but in in ranked mode um there's a lot of times where i play defense with one or two cards in my hand and then i put a kitty corner set of cards on my opponent's baseline i either go gp into like hags or gp into recruits right i i don't like to put the green prototypes on the baseline uh, and the reason is, is because if my opponent trades into the recruits with, let's say, I don't know, a West Wind Sailor, uh, they now get a full West Wind Sailor back and I've done five. Well, in that case, it's the same thing regardless. But there are times where I don't want them to get the GP buff afterwards. I want, I want them to have to trade into the GP and then if they're going to clear the other unit, they've got to clear the other unit with mana. Uh, those situations now, though, that GP buff is going to matter because I wasn't going to be able to get through whatever unit they cleared it with anyway for a turn or two. I was going to let my witches kind of pull from it and go onto the baseline from the backside. But now with Vitality, that could end up becoming a big problem a turn or two later as it's growing and moving down the board. That, to me, is less of a concern, but still a concern when, when using green prototypes in that way to help kind of push to the baseline. You're leaving it out there. The bigger concern, though, is opening. Um, and if not for the fact that Lost Psyches is now such a good three drop, that I think you should always just open with Lost Psyches if you have it in your hand. Um, I used to prefer to put green protos into hags or green protos into recruits, right? That's 10 or 11 health on the board. I preferred doing that rather than heliotroopers because yeah, that's seven, but it's also seven that's going to slowly erode and just 10 is bigger than seven, right? So I would rather, I want to cycle more, all those other good things. That GP now, it's, you know, if, if, if they green gale into their own GP, and get the, the, the Green Gale buff into my GP and then use their GP to clear my recruits, I am super sad. I've got to deal with that thing. Not only is that thing buffed, but it's now got vital, you know, like opening with GP now, I think is a big concern, not a huge concern, but a big concern. It's something that I probably will pass on doing more often than not. Your thought? 
Uh, I'd be a little more thoughtful about it for sure. Yep. Whenever uh, I could, I never tried to open with a GP anyway. Um, hmm. Half the time I, I would play just the two drop and not GP just wow. to allow having a, a cheap trade as your opponent plays yeah. their, their five cost or their five strength things. So it I'd keep depends it on how much you want to cycle depends on your deck. Um, but I, yeah, I agree. I've, I've played my openers a lot more conservatively recently anyway, just because honestly, it, it really feels like since the heroes league started, people have gotten so much better at playing around uh, the GP opener and getting the buff out of it. It's true. Yep. They have. They and have. playing Trekking uh, Alderman, which <laughs> then it gets rough. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Thomas. Reckless asks, do you think the GP nerf will hurt Rush more or make Rush better? Um, hmm. It's going to stay the same, I think. Because I think everyone is still going to play it. Um, no, actually, sorry. It's going to hurt Rush more because most of these other decks have, um, higher than five strength things when they're clearing. And so they're going to get the vitalized buff more often than you. They are. But on the other hand, when you're playing a very aggressive Rush deck, you tend to not care what your opponent's units are. If it's, you know, eight strength, nine strength, it doesn't matter. Yep. You're ignoring but it anyway. But maybe exactly. it allows so, maybe it allows them to maybe it allows your opponent to apply a little more pressure than they otherwise would have and outrace you a little bit better. I don't think. But so. what I'm I saying is, I think that. everyone is still going to play it equally. Um, mm -hmm. But what I'm saying is that now, basically, the only change is that you are giving your opponents a vitalized unit versus today. Nothing is happening between the trade. And so all that's happening is that they are getting a unit that's vitalized. So it helps the non-rush decks ever so slightly more. Okay. And MKM disagrees. Oh, okay. MKM says, I disagree. He thinks fewer people will run green prototypes because of this change, and then there won't be as much of a counter to rush decks, which is also potentially true. Yeah, right? if you're, like if the you're best playing, way to counter rush will happen, but I would be so happy if it did. <laughs> if everyone <laughs> starts playing green decks running it. instead... <laughs> Yeah, do, do not play Erratics instead of Green Protos. Like, Erratics right. are a yeah. good card. If you have that low of a mana curve, play both. But if it's only one, it's still GP, no? Movement Absolutely. is king. Right, yep. okay. Moving on from, from GPs, and by the way, uh, if you are at level four thinking about leveling up your GPs, level it up. Get get. Do not let this dissuade you from getting an excellent one mana card and then you get yeah. even more rewards back, right? Like, just do it. Uh, moving on from that, we have Beards of Crowglyph. Thomas, what's going on with Beards of Crowglyph? It is getting a one strength buff on the body across the board. So now it'll be seven, eight, nine, eleven, 11, and 13 a body strength. Um, it was a good card. It's still going to be a good card. To me, mm -hmm. I don't think this will change the play rate on it. Well, no, it probably will play, change the play rate. Because I think the card was actually perfectly fine strength-wise before. It actually provided a lot of value. Mm -hmm. um, but as Sheepyard has mentioned, anytime they make a uh, buff or a nerf, it gets people to actually try it. And then mm -hmm. they're like, oh, crap, this is really good. So that might be like what is happening here. That They're like, this is a good card. People just need to try it and actually start building decks with it in it. Yeah, and... this is a good card now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm saying, and so I think this is just a, a little bit better. So it's it's a good card before, good card now. Yeah, it, it's an okay card now. There's a reason why you don't see a ton of people playing it. It is a lot of strength, it is a lot of value, but it's unpredictable where the spawn goes. You can't control, um, and you know people kind of just tend to run something like Fluffy that can basically just take it out in one shot anyway. Uh, if you see Loris, Loris will just clear both of the units you just spent six mana making like that that feels terrible um so it, it's not great as it is i don't think adding one more strength makes it great um i think it is a fun card i like playing it and there are definitely times when just the raw strength value can seal a game for you mm -hmm. but i don't think that i don't think that this changes it if the, if it was going to be able to be played and seal the game for you it was it'll do that at 12 or 13 strength 
and adding one extra strength thing doesn't make it uh, win games that it was otherwise losing. Yeah, no, the one the one to put on it if you really wanted to improve play rate would have been movement. Because then that's a legit. Oh, that would have been so absurd. absurd. I know. I know. So absurd. I'm not saying do that. I'm just saying like if you really wanted to change play rates and really make the card an auto include, you you yeah, give it that would movement. be busted. Yeah, yeah, it would be absolutely busted. Um, as or bring it back down to five mana. Um, even at five mana, like nope. that was too way too good. It was good. I wouldn't say way too good. I mean, the the problem with it on five mana is that uh, your opponent like in in winter especially it was it, it started becoming this like blessed with brawn thing that was really problematic with it like that's where i started. didn't even need that did well didn't need it but boy <laughs> that, boy let me tell you when they hit it on it you were just like all right well that's a column i'm not going through anymore uh, uh so <laughs> column c and d it is for me um uh i i, I like the card um if it does become oppressive within the meta, I highly recommend Sly Boots. This is something I've learned through draft. Um, Sly Boots is like the easy four mana counter to beards. <laughs> Every time it was great. It was like, hey, those two cancel each other out. This is great. Um, so yeah, so that that was uh, uh, that was the the fun part of uh, uh, learning how to use Sly Boots. Um, MKS MKM says on Twitch, uh, it, this is just a nice indirect minion launcher buff. <laughs> oh i like it <laughs> uh, looking forward to those uh uh winter uh beards flesh menders minion launchers decks from oh, you mkm dear that would be <laughs> the meme all right so Baiku, give us our next one temple of the heart temple of the heart is just getting a little strength buff uh bringing it from uh two to six as you go from level one to five now up to three to seven so just a plus one across the board it's uh you know, really, this is not a card that we are the target audience for. Uh, we'll have to get Reckless's opinion, as he's probably spent more time playing it than most. Uh, but he's stopped recently, which means its play rate dropped, which is probably why Sheepyard is now upping strength. <laughs> like, Reckless isn't playing anymore. What do we got to do? It's it's a, it's a cute card. I like it. Uh, it definitely rewards very smart play. And now it's a little more viable. Um you know, it was it was the kind of allowed for some funny plays before, as you set it up near your opponent's baseline, and they had to say, "Well, do I let you keep your front uh, because I'm going to get healed out of this, or do I clear this and have to sink a bunch of strength into it?" And now they have to sink more strength into it, so it's a little bit of a tougher decision for them. I like it that it's um, I like that it's just getting strength commensurate with the other structures, like for three mana six strength is good for the hearth because the hearth is very very good yeah, but the hearth is op not the the more niche cards should not be um should not be as weak i agree all right so thomas uh beard's not the only elder getting hit uh with the buff age dusk bringers yep it is also getting a plus one strength across the board so it's now going to be five six seven eight ten strengths uh across the board and uh, basically the same comment as Beards, except uh, this one's a little bit worse. I, I do like that now it can finally, like 10 strength, kind of similar to like um, Gifted Recruits at five strength. There's those key um, key strengths that a body needs to have to be able to clear your opponent's things. And 10 strength is one of them. So even though it's not going to survive a trade, give strength something else, it'll at least be able to reset your opponent's uh, Ubis that they've got near your baseline. That doesn't help with this card's actually playability whatsoever because really. <laughs> you're not going to want to play this if you're playing a competitive deck. Um. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> tough. Uh, it, it, I just can't help but compare this card to Bucks where it's got a weaker body by a lot. It buffs one unit instead of two units, which is Matters. so much worse. And it costs one more mana like that's just that's three strikes but it's not just that age dust bringers you want to use age dust bringers to clear the weakest unit you can find on the board because then you get the biggest body left over harder to remove and you're going to get the same buff onto your other unit regardless of the trade right yes 
Bucks wants to take the hardest hit your opponent can give it. Your opponent makes a 10 or 12 health unit on the board, put Bucks in front of it. You not only remove that unit, which is big value, getting rid of a 10 health on the board is a big deal, but you then get 20 health out of it. That's nuts. Yep. It's nuts. And this does not compare to that. No. Uh, I think the closest comparison is actually the, the recently buffed Fleshmenders. So now this oh, okay. gives a big strength buff like Fleshmenders does. It has one more strength on the body. It has one less movement, and they're the same mana cost. People still don't play Fleshmenders, and Fleshmenders <laughs> is in a faction with mana acceleration, so it's a little more acceptable to pay that seven mana That's fair. In, a, in a winter deck. Like, it, it's really so hard for any other faction to look at Age Tuskbringers at seven mana and say, yeah, I can just slot this right in. Yeah. No, I think you're right. That's a really good point, yeah. And if you're playing Winter, you'd rather have the extra movement and the guaranteed buff from Fleshmenders, right? Oh, more than that, I want to I want to buff my hearth. So <laughs> Age Dustbringers doesn't do that. <laughs> That's a good point. Doesn't buff structures, yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, yep. I'll take I'll take the next one because I find this one very curious. Um, uh, Broken Earth Drakes will now be cheaper, uh, down from seven mana to six. Uh, their strength is now two, down from three, which makes it easier to kill, which is good because it's really the on death effect that you want to play it with. But the requirements that it not be on your baseline and that it won't impact dragons still remain so it's better but i still can't i i i can't decide whether or not this is actually uh viable yet i i i feel like for six mana it's got to do a lot more i don't know what do you guys think I think it's totally playable now. I've really? tried it a couple of times, I think in like November. Someone, I, I tried to ask people like what my biggest weakness in, in deck building was. And I was told that control decks were uh, something that people never saw me play at all. And so I was like, all right, well, I'm going to try and start building some control decks to uh, build up my, my skills and put together Broken Earth Drakes. I think I got to like 30th place with it and i was playing it all the time uh, in wow. that deck like i mean i i saw the card i'd be playing it if and so the two uh strengths from three, three strengths does nothing to it if you want to blow up the board there's things that you can hit with it sure. and and so you were always getting that off um and the thing is that like when i was playing it and doing the seven to the entire board it was basically the, like the same thing as uh aaron play and okay. um at that point, every time I was playing it, it was like, I should probably just be playing Aaron rather than this. But now that it's down to six strength, uh, there's quite a few games where you've probably noticed where you want to play Dawn Sparks, but you just don't quite have the board presence to be able to play yeah. Dawn Sparks. Look at now you've got a six mana card that you can blow up your entire opponent's board because it's like, ah, otherwise I'd be under too much pressure. And so I, I really like that this is down one one whole mana. I think that's going to be a big deal for this card. Yeah, uh, especially because now think about level five Gift of the Wise. And that gives you 15 mana, and that's this is six. That leaves you nine left for Ulf or Siren. Uh, you know, you can now all of a sudden you can do some real damage to your opponent's board and still play something offensive or, you know, play Ulf defensively, get that health gain, clear out the couple of units that Broken Earth Drakes doesn't, uh, or move your front so you can actually play Broken Earth Drakes off of your baseline. You don't care if it kills your ult. You got the health gain out of it. That's all you were looking for. So mm -hmm. it, it, it doesn't care which base it's bordering either, right? Which is Correct. which is a little on the... like Because one of the things, that, that turn, right? I play Gift, I throw Siren into, your opponent, into, into my opponent's base, and then I put Broken Earth Drakes down to help hold front. I give my opponent the option of clearing it if he wants to, but then there goes his whole board. No, you don't play it further down the board. You you play Broken Earth uh, at your baseline, so it just goes up one. Right, exactly. Because That's if they point. wanted to, well, if they want to clear it, they have to put enough m units onto the board to move down to clear it. They're not going to want to do that that bad trade, because no, think of the amount not. of mana and and strength to do that. And then you've got uh, 
board presence because your broken earth is going to keep moving forward then so you are guaranteed board presence you don't so, ever so I'm put guaranteed broken... the thir- i'm guaranteed the third row yes or if, if you really want you could put it in the middle um because again they're either going to have to waste a wild saber pause on it or two units on it to to be able to reset your front mm-hmm, mm-hmm. all right I don't know. I I would like to see yeah. the uh, I would like to see the on the base uh, uh, restriction removed. I I, I find it. I, I find it, it might be. I that might make it too good. I think it's already very very playable if you are slotting it into the right kind of winter deck. Mm-hmm. Uh, removing the baseline restriction so you can just play it on your baseline and wipe out everything your opponent has on the board. I think would actually be, be too too good. Mm-hmm. Hundred percent agree. Okay. Sorry, as a control player, I like cards that actually, you know, control. <laughs> Do you not play, like, Void Surgers? Uh, I don't uh, play Void Surgers very often, um, mostly because uh, the boards where Void Surgers would be good tend to also be really good with, like, Witches and Trekking, because um, normally Void Surgers, it's, they're not, like, giant units, right? Like, if your opponent has, has gone wide and has three or four units on the board within proximity to each other void surges is good but void surges isn't always good witches and trekking is always good and those boards are fantastic for witches and trekking so you are also... talking about winter right now yeah, so yeah yeah he's talking about <laughs> shadowfin control where you have toxic sacrifice yeah, you toxic, have witches to trigger stuff. your own trekking it's it's very different. Winter does not have th- those kind of cheap removal tools. I, no, but I, I right. play I play HV uh, in winter decks when I play winter control. Um, so that tends to my my void surgers are also only level four, so that doesn't help me out too much. Um, but so so yeah, so I like I like HV, I like trekking. Um, I now have Loris at five. Those tends to be the, those tend to be the the cards that I rely on aside from like an Aaron Needle Blast Bladestorm. Uh, all right, so moving on, Thomas, you want to give us moments peace? All right, um, man, you're just giving me all the boring ones. So moments peace uh, also gets a plus one Learn your toad uh, games. across the board. <laughs> That's my punishment, huh? That's so it. plus one strength across the board. Um, so it's going to be five, six, seven, eight, nine uh, at level five, and this one feels like this is a buff for draft. I saw it every once in a while in draft and it just was extremely underwhelming every time my opponents played it. Even like when they played it, I'm like, oh, sucks that you had to draft that card. <laughs> and, and so maybe, uh, yeah. maybe this is for that. <laughs> it's also pretty underwhelming on ladder. Like it's, yeah, it's fine. It it does what it's supposed to do. It gives a big buff to something and then my units don't move for a turn and then kind of like, okay, but now maybe this has a little bit of buff broken earth drakes a six mana to follow it up. Sure. Yep. This is true. Uh, <laughs> and your unit's very unlikely to die, both because it got buffed and, uh, yeah. No, no. Okay. All right. A, a free, a dragon freeze deck. I could see this. I could see this. Um, so, Baiku, I gave you Kindred, or chose to give you Kindred's Grace because I know you've been goofing around with it a lot, uh, playing 1C's deck. So, uh, here you go, sir. Kindred's Grace getting a little buff. I have been using it in the top 10 this month, and it's mm-hmm. been perfectly viable. Uh, so I'm happy to see this. Uh, but it's a little buff. It's plus one strength just to the main target, uh, not not across the board. All the other, uh, other units of the same unit type as the same target still get the same buff. Uh, but you get a, a, a nice little boost. Yeah, it's um, good. It's good. Yeah, Come plus, on plus one across the board. I'm happy with that. I think it's already very good. Um, although, obviously, really only in Shadowfen because Shadowfen has the the toads to take advantage of it. Um, it is yeah, interesting it, to note that that you do this on toads, and and the biggest one is only a clear uh, with Fluffy, right? Like the biggest one now trades. Oh no! If you do me, the, if you do the this trade. on a one strength toad before, well, mm-hmm. before currently, right now it is exactly 12 strength right yes. it's a clean clear now not and even now fluffy. it'll be up to 13 so now not even fluffy can clear the one which is you know pretty good pretty it's good okay. look i played i played games where 
I just put Kindred's Grace on one unit when there was only one other unit of the same type on the board just because <laughs> it applied pressure. And, you know, you're still getting a ton of strength for, for six mana. Now you're getting one extra strength. Like that. It's pretty good. I'm happy with that. I tried playing it with uh, Aaron uh, and a lot of uh, heroes and knights. So it was like an Edric Aaron deck. Uh, because uh, when e- Aaron casts it on herself, it also buffs all the other heroes on the board, which was kind of cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it never worked out right. Um, moving on, <laughs> uh, uh, you can find on Stormbound Kitty, uh, of course, the nerf compensation data. If you're wondering uh, how many rewards you're getting, it looks like only green prototypes is going to be considered a nerf this time. Everything else feels mm-hmm. like a buff. Everything else is definitely above. Uh, so it would only be for GPs. And again, if you don't have your GPs max level and you have the opportunity to level it up right now, do so. It's still an amazingly playable card after this. Um, it is nerfed. So you get some free rewards out of it. And that brings us, guys, to our two new cards being released in February. Uh, they are going to be released not at the same time. They're going to be released a little bit apart, one on the 7th and then one on the 21st, so two weeks later. Uh, the first one on the 7th... Sev- Actually, since you complained, uh, Thomas, uh, which one of these two do you want to take? <laughs> do you want the I leechers take... or the spongers? I've got a lot of comments on both, so I could take either, but I'll start with the uh, the Oregon leechers. Okay, so Thomas will take the Oregon Leechers then. Uh, This one is coming up on the 7th. Walk us through this Winter Ancient. All right, so this one is a... We've got our first Frostling Ancient that is being added to the game. Epic. Uh, Three mana with one movement, and it's a fatty. Six, seven, eight, nine, eleven strength uh, at level five. Three mana for eleven strength. Thankfully, there's a downside. <laughs> so before moving, uh, reducing your mana by three, then freeze the first enemy on the tile on the front. Uh, with this mana reduction thing, reduce the reduction by one for each other friendly ancient on the board. So it's like a combination of Faithless Prophets and First Mutineers. It has to be the last card you play in your t- turn, I think, because... If you've got no other ancients on the board, you play this. You're like, if you're on your six mana turn, you play this. You just lost all of your mana. Oh, that's so, a good point. So yeah, you, this has to be the last card you play. You play your gifted recruits or whatever, and then this. So that, that way you only lose one mana for the turn. Um, so so it's first mutineers, and then it's faithless prophets because three mana for just this massive body. I mean, the fact that Huge. it can almost straight up take out a fluffy bad boxers. I like that. Is yeah, yeah. It it is is this the biggest three mana card in the game? It is like like yeah. Face of Prophets was the biggest. Bigger than most uh, two three mana cards put together most of the time. Like that's mm-hmm. also true. No, oh, no. The, the downside is real. The downside it's... is real. This is actually a lot of the times a six mana card, and it's not so great for six mana. No. Nope. And even worse, when you have to spend even more mana on it, because if you play this against me and you didn't kill this into whatever you traded with, you can bet that I'm going to reduce it down to like (laughs) one strength and let it go because I'm going to keep playing my cards for the game and you are not going to be able to play anything. (laughs) Why why are you going to reduce this to one strength instead of just dropping a sweet cap in front of it and being like, bro, this thing's just moving left to right for the rest of the game. Well, that's fair. Yeah. Confusion. Or I guess straight up ignore it. Terrible. I don't care if it's yeah. eleven strength and it's no. just continuing to move down the board because if my opponent's not playing anything, I guess I can just play offensively. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Right. right. So your opponent plays some other ancients to try to limit the side effect. You can just remove the other ancients. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's going to be some real high roll potential here, though, where you open on three mana with fragmented essences on one side of the board and erratic neglects on the other side of the board. Oh god. And then and then this oh, just no. never never gets a discount at or a mana reduction at all and it's just three mana Even... for a huge body. 
even then, though, I mean, with all the cards that have movement, you've got Gifted Recruits uh, and Wild Saber Paws, you can immediately go across and wipe out half of the Fragmented Essences uh, on that first turn. And so then on their, is that four mana turn? When they would want to play mm-hmm. this, they yeah. still only have two other Ancients on the board. You're all the way across the board already. And they don't so have, you, gotta, right? you only on, have two mana to play defense with, and then they can remove exactly. Other well, they're going to be on their five mana turn, and they're going to wipe out your other two. So when you get back to your five mana turn, you yeah. only have two mana two in your pool. Oh yeah. my gosh! Yeah. So I, I think the downside for this one is more real than the massive I, yeah. body on this thing. I so, do not see this as an early game card, even so though it costs three aid. mana. Call for aid spawns token units that are the same race as the target unit correct that is correct is there a place for a call for aid leechers deck so that you can just amplify the number <laughs> the number of ancients on the board oh, that the gift gift into this and call for aid how yeah. about we move on to the other okay. ancient for call for aid? Maybe, maybe not great. <laughs> maybe not great. Well, yeah, actually, I, I don't yeah. think it's worth it. No, no, no. I was thinking erratic neglects call for aid, and then this. Uh, um, Look, there's. It's definitely a possibility. Anything that puts a lot of ancients on the board, you want to take advantage of with this card. I don't know that Winter is exactly looking for that kind of value um no you know no. but you want to spam you want in a winter deck you generally want to just accelerate to your late game cards that are really powerful Correct. this prevents you from playing your late game cards unless you fill up your deck with ancients or weird call for aid synergy it's you know there there definitely no. could be something there as a fun deck but in general i think <laughs> it's going to be more competitive for winter to just uh you know, stick with the heavy hitters that they are typically using. Agreed. This is kind of the same way as like Rhymelings, where even though it's a two mana card or a low cost card, you wouldn't be able to play it until later on in the game. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Yep. Uh, and of if... course, Reckless asks, how do you see this card in win- in Winter Rush? You have to play it on your opponent's baseline and it has to go into the base to win the game because... If it doesn't do that, if your opponent was able to beat it down strength-wise enough, when you lose your three mana for your next turn, when it goes into your opponent's base, you're not going to have enough mana for a good runner to finish off your yeah. opponent. Right. You're yeah, gonna put you're gonna put this onto your opponent's baseline on like seven or eight mana, and you won't be able to play wolf cloaks afterwards. So you'll have to finish the game with like saber paws first mutineers. Like you could definitely design a deck that this fits into. I don't know if it's the best winter rush deck possible. So, so, but so, but I think it's viable. So here's here's uh, um, let's say I put I'm just gonna pick I put West Wind Sailors okay in B five, and I put this in A five. So this is protected by the West Wind, right? If my opponent saber paws forward or recruits forward and then plays uh, 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 the the four mana cat uh, that we were just talking about, sly boots, sly boots. Boots. the Oregon leechers attacks into the west wind sailors, goes from eleven to five. There's three mana dropped. They hit end turn. The Oregon leechers now attack into base. Dealing only five instead of the seventeen you thought you were going to do. Oh, and by the way, you are now down you six mana. No. <laughs> six mana. Yeah. So you spent nine mana on this eleven strength card. Like which, it's just brutal. <laughs> it's tough. Yeah, it, there's, there's. I think the downsides and the smart uh, tech cards that your opponent can put in are definitely a concern, and if. If you start to see too much of this card, yeah, people will start playing cards that are specifically teched against it. But like as it is, how how often do you see sly boots on ladder? You know, it's well, not, that, that's it's a not very a good lot. point. No, no, that's a very good point. Except that having now played it in draft like two or three times, uh, I'm I'm only like two copies away from getting it to level five, and it's actually my intention in February 
if not February, March, uh, to start experimenting with Sly Boots as one of my four drops to see just how often I can uh, uh, generate good value out of it. Because again, very similar to Loris, um, Loris does so well in Shadowfen because people tend to put their units right next to each other so that yep. witches aren't good. And witches, therefore, with Sly Boots is like a perfect pair. And the difference between oh. the two, and now we're, we're getting off on a tangent and from the new card, the difference between the two is that Loris can make units move vertically. Sly yep. Boots can only make units move horizontally. That's exactly so, what I was going to say. It's a big fair. deal. They Opponents do start playing that way. Right, so they start stacking them in a column instead of going wide in a row. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, well, speaking of good call for aid synergy, uh, Sibaiku, you have Martyr <laughs> Spongers. So I, I, I assume these are... Sponges, yes. No, Spongers. Yeah. These are the people who oh. sponge the martyrs. So if you're a martyr needing a, a bath, you go to a martyr sponger. Who... Yeah, that's correct. My apologies. Sp yeah. Uh, martyr spongers. All oh, right, so these are these are spongers that are sponging. They're a swarm epic. They are an undead ancient. Uh, we got six mana, zero movement, and six, seven, eight, ten, twelve strength. So you know, decent sized body, but not huge. Hairy chestnuts. Uh, Similar. Not not bucks. Not bucks. And not 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 beards anymore. But but decent. Yep. Yep. Uh, before moving, deal two damage to up to three other friendly ancient units, and then deal the same amount of damage to the enemy's base. Um, so That's sorry, I said That's two. I said five. two damage, but it is one or two depending on the level, mm -hmm. and then it is up to three friendly ancient units. It is one, one, two, three, three. So uh, a lot of a lot of things change as this unit levels up. Uh, mm -hmm. It can do a ton of damage if you have three other friendly ancients on the board. You're gonna get six damage to the opponent's base at the cost of your own board. Right, you're gonna um, you're gonna hunter's vengeance like you're gonna level one hunter's vengeance your board, and and deal six damage to your opponent's base. It's it it's definitely a swarm chip in a way that we have not seen before. Correct, which is pretty cool. Uh, I, I have been thinking about how to jam a ton of cheap ancients into a deck. Look, we got one mana, two mana, three mana ancients. You can put those in. Mm -hmm. They, uh, the two mana ancient, or if you want to include bounded demons, they spawn more ancients. You could try to get real weird with call for aid, which is a, a little dicey, but it's an option. Go big or go home, man. Go big or go home. And you know, maybe you you can buff up. A fragmented essence so that it survives and continues to spawn and then this kind of translates that into chip and then the rest of your deck can be mostly control cards to keep your opponent away from your ancients because you know if your opponent can clear your erratic neglects and your fragmented essences and this kind of doesn't do anything um unlike the orgone leechers this uh does not have movement so it doesn't do anything when you play it you need to either command it forward or wait a turn and that makes it a, a long game proposition it also doesn't deal damage to itself and proc so if you don't have any other friendly mm -hmm. ancients to your point i just want to make that clear to to our listeners that uh it won't damage itself and ping face it just doesn't ping face if there are no other ancients if i'm reading this correctly i believe that is correct mm -hmm. <laughs> So while this is a chunk of stats, not a lot of the rest of the ancients are. Uh, most no. of the rest of them are fairly easy to clear. When you when you say swarm, I think chunk of stats that doesn't move. <laughs> well, good news, you got more. This is this is the dread fonds of ancients. Um, yep. Yeah, uh, so speaking uh, speaking of chunk of stats that doesn't move. Uh, you know, put bucks in the deck and you kind of like buff up a board and then you play this. Maybe Mr. P93 asks on Twitch, would you play two six mana cards in the swarm deck? Can I, would you play this with bucks? Can I afford to play two six mana cards in a swarm deck? Is this significantly different than playing Zuri and bucks right now? It is. And the reason why it is, is because Zuri and Bucks actually can just get Forgotten Souls into base for lethal damage, whereas this 
can deal six damage. And I don't know if you've thought yeah. about it, but uh, most of the time the Bucks buff goes onto a unit that's worth more than six when it's done. Uh, Martyr Spunger. And it's already also near the opponent's base, which Correct. when you get to your seven mana <laughs> turn, you're just going to send it into base anyway. Right, exactly. Right. Like a lot of times, Forgotten Souls and, and, and Goat is, you know, a, a lethal on any board that had Bucks played the previous turn. Yeah. Uh, it's really. I hard. definitely. I do not see this slotting into the current Swarm mid range decks that we play by any stretch. Uh, it's definitely got to be a, a new swarm control archetype that is able to take it into the late game. But most uh, of those, most use of those broken decks... truths for clears. Use the new temple of the heart to heal back up. No, mo most of those decks use the tower, right? Pillars of Doom use Aaron Bladestorm Needle uh, Needle Blast Blade. Most of those decks. We're talking about Mateus because that's Mateus. the only okay. that's sure. the only swarm control you <laughs> tend to see. <laughs> Mateus has a very refined deck that doesn't play a ton of ancients and even if it did what does pillars do at max level four four that seems that's reliably four right it's not like if there's other stuff on the board at the start of your turn it's just yeah. i'm alive if, i deal four yeah if the yep. tower is surviving it's gonna just keep chunking out damage it doesn't and matter what's on the board I think that's a really good um, analogy for the card, though, is look at how many times where, well, clearly you guys haven't played any Pillars uh, decks, uh, <laughs> but the amount of times that you just can't play it because you know it wouldn't survive till the next turn to be able to get four off in right. the first place. This is the exact same situation, except worse, because right. your opponent... Not only like can you not like tuck this away to try and keep this alive, but you also have to ensure all your other ancients that are around also have to be somehow tucked away to survive until the beginning of your next turn as well. Well, well see, that's not that's not entirely true, but 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 when you when you like play the turns out in your head, right? So I can't play pillars. I can play martyrs because it will survive. My opponent's unit crashes into it. Maybe they don't clear it, right? So we do that. Let's say we do that on six. The Martyrs moves forward. We're now in a great position. I play Fragmented uh, to the left, right? Because then uh, when I play Forgotten Souls, it moves first. It breaks into pieces. Then Martyrs moves, and it triggers its thing. This is great, except I just cleared my own board. Right. You did, you, <laughs> you spent seven mana building a board and then clearing it. It's all it. gone. <laughs> Or all for the sake of six damage. six damage. And you weren't playing defense when you did that. Right. Like, like, that's not good. <laughs> it's going to be... Yeah. Look, I hesitate to to just automatically rule out a big chunk of, of chip damage Yeah. No, without sure. having experimented with it. Because Swarm has shown that a big chunk of chip, chip damage can definitely be viable. But... I, I struggle to find a way to make this work for sure. You need a lot of defensive spells. Uh, you need to have a lot of board control because a lot of things have to go right for this to be viable. Even if Martyr Spongers didn't drain from your own units, I'm not sure it's <laughs> viable. But the draining from your own units means that using the cheap one or two mana cards with it and a Forgotten Souls, for example, uh, you, you're you're just wiping, you, you're throwing that mana away. You're, you're converting what would be units on the board, defensive presence, if you like, mm -hmm. clogging runners. But you're taking all of it and just throwing it out the window for six damage, and I don't think it's worth it for six damage. I really don't. Not, not while Forgotten Souls does what it does. Right. There's just Correct. so many more efficient ways to deal six damage. Yeah, I mean, Pog for three. There you like, go. Look, if if you wanted to do six damage to your opponent when you already have a board and you don't want anything left over afterward, just West Wind and Forgotten Souls. Right? There you go. There you go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. You're welcome. Or you could have been playing Vindicators to be able to guarantee to get the damage in this yeah. turn. Right. Yep. 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 Uh, both of these are going to be available in uh, card packs. Uh, you can get three of the card packs plus uh, three of the Oregon Leechers. 
uh, with five fusion stones and 750 coins to help you level it up. Uh, for $9.99 in the United States, I don't know what that converts to in euros or pounds or any other currency. I don't know why I just called those two out, but those are the two that popped in my mind. And I'm like, ooh, I don't know what it costs there. I don't know what it costs anywhere, to be honest. Um, uh, that will be on uh, the 7th through the 13th. So if you really want to experiment with something that drains your own mana, knock yourself out. That will be the second week of February. And then the third week, it will be, uh, uh, the, sorry, the fourth week, no, third week, uh, the 21st, uh, through the 28th, you can get the second one. All right. Uh, on along with that, we're going to get a couple of new brawls. Uh, our new, yeah. you know, uh, so Sebek, so, give us the first. Just like we did in December for the minion launchers, we're going to get brawl <laughs> events where a zero mana level one copy of the new card will be added to your deck. If you also have the card, it will cost zero mana as well. If you put it into your brawl deck. Uh, and that'll be the brawls on February 10th and February 24th to celebrate the new cards coming out and give everyone a chance to play with them. All right. And uh, there are going to be a couple of Valentine's events. You'll be able to get some new avatars. Again, check out stormbound-kitty.com. Look at the releases for February. You can see the three of them, 200 rupees a piece. If you're a high rolling whale like Thomas, maybe this is something you do because he also hits refresh every once in a while on his card offers. But for the rest of us poor folk, uh, I don't know. They're cute. I really enjoy them. Uh, but I don't think I'll be getting them. Sebeka, will you be getting them? I plead the fifth. <laughs> <laughs> there will also be a couple of Valentine's Day packs, of course. Um, uh, standard kind of stuff. Look for details uh, again in Stormbound Kitty quality of life improvements this one i find actually really exciting guys uh i like guns i put guns uh generally useful neutrals into all of my decks uh thomas what are they doing for me we can actually tab our favorite cards and so they're gonna be the very first things that show up in your list so when you're throwing your sparkly kitties in every single deck just go ahead and favorite that thing it's gonna be the first thing that shows up you Which... said trekking alderman wrong, but yes, you're absolutely right. <laughs> That's going to be awesome. Or Loris or whatever your other yeah favorite card is. It's going to be really nice. It's these Again, these little tiny tweaks just make such a massive difference to just the overall polish of the game, and mm -hmm. I like this a lot too. Yep. Uh, my favorite quality of life improvement is that patch notes will now be available in-game. There'll be a link under the community tab. You'll be able to see it. Uh, and Brajoja shared on Discord a little mock-up of a little flag pointing to it that just says, hey, patch notes are here. Remember to take a look. Uh, that, I, I, that'll I'm... be nice because there's still people coming into the Discord and asking, oh, were cards were changed? I didn't know. Where can I find out? And we always helpfully point them to Stormbound Kitty, but having an in-game mechanism for that is better. Mm -hmm. so, so that's Absolutely. really your favorite quality of life improvement? It's such a little thing, but it makes a big difference. People got to be aware of what's changing. It's true. All right. Okay. All right. Because back in the day, back before I even knew, ever knew, you literally, at the beginning of the month, you went in to, and looked at every single card to figure out what changed. Because there's nothing worse than playing the game and then being like, oh, <laughs> that's a thing. <laughs> that didn't do what I expected. I can't yeah. play that when I expected. Exactly. That was terrible back in the day. Back so in the day, that be... happens to me every single brawl when I play the warrior casual. Like, wait, that's supposed to up? <laughs> <What>? <laughs> no. All right. Well, that's going to end the main portion of this episode, which means it's time for me to remind you, please contact us, preferably in our channel on the Stormbound Discord server, the official one, uh, on Twitter at BroodSages. Always, you can email us at thebroodsages at gmail.com. We do have an additional way for you to reach out and support us if you like. We have a Gumroad account where you can become patrons of our work. That's available. Uh, at our, uh, check out the link on our Stormbound Kitty page. This week, we do not have uh, uh, user comments because we've been taking them uh, live as we've gone. But uh, we do instead have a GIF. So let me queue up this GIF. This GIF is for Thomas and Subaiku for hitting... Uh, Let's see if I can. Can I, I want to make it clear that this is a surprise to Thomas and I. We have no idea what's going on. You and have this is none. Very likely going to be a disaster. This is not going to be a disaster. You guys are going to love this. 
I just have to find out how do I there she is. We're going live. Are you guys ready? Oh, um, watch stream. Okay. Okay, yeah. Watch this. Well, it's it's mostly so that you can uh hear the uh hear this. You ready? Hello, Brood Sages. Congratulations on 50 episodes. Keep up the great work. Hey, Brood Sages, Reckless here. Just wanted to say congratulations on 50 episodes. Boy, you guys are so old. Thank you for providing this wonderful podcast. It's been really useful during my 8 to 12 hour long games. And I've either, accidentally racked up 120 hours of listening to it. And welcome to MKM's message for the 58th episode of the Brood Sages. I wanted to say slowly, but I suppose rapidly will be a better word for how quick you grew in becoming a skilled player and now established as veteran players. Even though you two are the core of the Brood Sages, your hospitality towards Ardru and later on towards Thomas Chuchu made them blend in very well and fooled us all that you have known each other for years. But hey, I'm already oh, double up time now, so time to wrap it up. Thanks for all the fun content you have brought us in the podcast, the engagement in the Discord server, promoting events from other players, extra stuff like the meta report and its evolution to how it is right now, very interesting. And of course, your latest jewel, the draft guide. That's gonna do it for this message for me and myself. I am MKM, I'm your podcast listener and reminding the Brood Sages for once to stay hydrated. Hey guys, this is Damir, and I just wanted to say congratulations on your 50th episode. Hey Sages, Icecom here, just wanting to wish you well into the new year, and to thank you for all the hard work that you're doing for the community. You might be the second best Stormbound podcast out there, but I think you're fantastic and doing alright. Breed Sages, what's up? StonyJ25 here, checking in to congratulate you all on 50 episodes. It's a fantastic run, I'm a huge fan, and I'm certainly looking forward to more this year. I appreciate your contributions to the community, not only with this podcast, but with things like the draft guide and the occasional stream from Freeloader on Monday nights. Uh, those are always fun. Uh, but yeah, Thomas, Subaiku, Freeloader, congratulations, and uh, I'm looking forward to more. I'm sorry you missed the beginning of it, but uh, I'll, you guys are both going to get the file so you can uh, listen to it on your own afterwards. I just wanted to get your uh, sort of live takes. That's why I wanted to do it live on, on stream. But that, was, that was beautiful, and thank you so much to everybody who put something together. That was, uh, that was amazing. Yeah, I only heard the last half of that, but that was very much appreciated. Yeah, yeah, no worries. Like I said, I'll, I'll, I'll make sure you guys both have it. Um, so. Uh, there you go. That is, I believe, uh, going to do it for this episode, everyone. Thank you so much for everyone who participated. For Sabaiku and Thomas, I am Freeloader. We are the Brood Sages, reminding you to stay hydrated. 50.